So, last week I filmed a video about this perfume, Tangi Eau de Toilette. It's a blind buy that I did. It's a 1920s era perfume that is purportedly tangerine and jasmine, and I found it to be really just mostly jasmine with a little bit of tangerine. This was not a successful blind buy for me. I didn't enjoy the jasmine in this perfume, and that got me thinking about why. Why did I not like this? And what do I like about the jasmine perfumes that I do enjoy? What makes them different? So I thought I would try and do a little video um, just pulling out my three most jasmine-centric perfumes and kind of talking through how they compare or don't compare. That word is contrast. All right, so the three jasminiest jasmines I have in my collection right now are, we have Serge Lutens, this is A La Nuit. Of course, this is Thierry Mugler's Alien. This is a pre-reformulation bottle. And then I have Tom Ford Jasmine Rouge. Let's go ahead and start with A La Nuit. So this is basically a jasmine soul floor. I will maybe put the note pyramid up if you want to look at this. When I pulled this out to test it, I really, this is one that I, I liked smelling from the bottle. That's kind of how I had been experiencing it mostly more than wearing it out of the house because I just really, it's a very naturalistic smelling jasmine. So that's just kind of the way I have been using it. So I pulled this out to test the other day and I was going to take some notes. And after I sprayed it, my first thought was that it reminded me of being outside on a warm summer evening. And then immediately after I thought that, I was like, well, it's called A La Nuit. So no wonder that is very appropriately named. So good job to whoever at the marketing team at Sarasotans who named this. It delivers exactly what it promises on the bottle. So very well done there. Yeah, I'll go ahead and spray a little bit more of this just for right now. Wait, I had it on this arm. I'll do this. My first impression of this is very much, there's something about it. It is just like being outside on a warm summer evening you know, maybe the sun is about to set or it's just set and there's still a lot of light and you're wearing short sleeves, maybe it's after work and you're going out to dinner, you're feeling relaxed and you're walking through a neighborhood and you're smelling flowers in the air. That's where the summer air, it, it has a certain like tactility to it that the air is touching your skin and it feels kind of buoyant and I, I feel like you get some of that from, from this perfume. There's also something slightly green and a little bit astringent right right near the top it's kind of like it's a little bit like a like a knife edge it's got a tone a, a sharp tone a knife is sharp it's got a sharp tone it does it feels very outdoors very natural like things growing you start to feel like a sense of pollen so very much the physical presence of the jasmine sticking your nose directly into the flowers and you know literally touching to your nose and getting pollen up up in your nostrils it's, it's that sort of closeness and immediacy of of the kind of yellow yellow pollen floral scent there's a little bit of um a little bit of a vegetal note too so you get sort of a sense of like stalks maybe more than leaves kind of fleshy fleshy leaves that sounds gross but yeah, it's very much like a, there's a garden and it's, it is in surround sound. So I have a story about Jasmine. On my walk to work at my old job, I would go past this house that had Jasmine growing over, trailing over their fence out front. And one night when I was coming home in the summer, I was just kind of hit in the face with this amazing, sweet, fruity, alluring aroma that was coming from, from this jasmine bush, the jasmine, jasmine vines, jasmine vines. And yeah, I, I literally turned around and I'd walk past the house and I had to walk back and go stick my face basically into, into these flowers. And after that, it was just every day, basically when I came home from work that summer, I had to stop. Like I, I had to stop and smell, smell the jasmine. I had to stop and smell the jasmine. It's funny, I would walk the same way on the way to work, but in the mornings for whatever reason, I guess it's maybe the chill left over from the night, the, the scent didn't carry in the same way that it did 
kind of in the, the heat of the afternoon and the early evening that just kind of made the scent expand and take up space in in the air around so that's my it was it was amazing it was so beautiful and it was like a highlight of walking home in the summer um i should go there it's not far from where i live right now and i i could walk there i mean not right now it's cold and the thing is dead but this summer i should walk there because it's still it's still around and i really enjoyed smelling that jasmine it doesn't actually say summer evening but i think summer is implied because jasmine is outside and blooming in the summertime. It is very much kind of a, it's a round, a round scent. So I was saying that tangy, the jasmine and tangy was, was kind of flat and a little bit monotone. And I feel like this Alanui is, is like a chord, you know, a full chord. It's, it's like a pipe organ, you know, all of those, all of the pipes and all the petals and all the knobs, like the multiplicity of all of those elements that make up the, the sound so that it, it is like a wall of sound that fills up an entire cathedral. Um, that's kind of what this feels like to me there. It's, it's not just a single note. It is creating a whole physical space filled up with the experience of the scent. I think this is what you would probably call an indolic jasmine maybe just on the edge of smelling bad you know there's a little bit of sense of all the different things growing maybe like a, t a hint of fertilizer or mulch and like wet earth there and humidity in the air a little bit it's not a it's not a shy jasmine it it projects and it has a presence and it's something that i think i think another reason why i haven't worn it much is because it feels like it would be wrong to spray this on and and then go sit in an office for eight hours. Something about this, it feels a little bit out of place to be bringing in this, you know, summer evening garden into your cubicle. That just feels like it doesn't quite fit. And I think that's probably a reason why I haven't really worn it too much. So I mean, maybe you could wear it if you were going on vacation or maybe an after work thing. You know, once you get home and you're ready to relax and you're having drinks outside. I can't get over it. There's something so tactile about this. It's like caressing your skin. It's not uh, like it's not just, you know, thinking about like a veil kind of around you. It's like actively kind of touching you in a way that I, I could see some people finding this a little bit too heady and maybe they don't like the closeness of that. But this happens to work for me. Because there is still like a little bit of the 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 astringent sharp note peeing through, so it's kind of like like a fo like a fog, a thick fog, but there's also like a ship cutting through the fog. So there there's this something in the air, but there's also another element that's like cutting through it at the same time. It's the fog and the ship. It does eventually settle down and become quieter after. I don't know, like three or four hours, maybe. So yeah, maybe you'll, if you have a really leisurely breakfast at home, you could take this into the office after a couple of hours and be okay. And then after that, it does sort of tend to leave that um, the kind of honey, sweet, salty skin dry down that I, I really like. Yeah, it eventually becomes a little bit more well-behaved. So that's ennui in a lot of words. Now, comparing to... Tom Port's Jasmine Rouge, because Alien, I mean, Alien, we, I hate to say we know because nobody is born knowing what Alien is, but I'm assuming if you're watching this, you have some kind of context for what Alien is. So we all kind of know Alien is, it's Jasmine, but it's also its own thing. So I feel like the next comparison that will help me is Alanoui versus Jasmine Rouge. And I'm going to spray a little bit more on to, yeah, so they're both jasmine centric and and highlight jasmine I'll you know note pyramid whatever um but they're so different especially when sprayed side by side and especially in the opening the opening when you spray this it's it's like it's purple to me I know it says rouge but to me but to me this is this is a purple smell it's it's almost like it's very bright it's almost a little bit like fruit punchy right at the beginning and then after the immediate opening, it kind of settles down a little bit into something that feels a little bit more like jasmine tea, which feels kind of blue to me. The times that I've worn this, I've had the strangest scent associations 
with these scented markers, smelly markers from the 1980s, and not just one of them, but almost the whole box. So I get the dark blue one, which I think is blueberry, the light blue one, which is fruit punch. There's a bit of the purple one, obviously, kind of a grapeiness, And then even the brown one, which is cinnamon, and the black one, which is licorice. So throughout the course of this perfume, I get, I get each of these different scented markers. And I think because that was my immediate tie was, that was my immediate thought was these scented markers. I also get a little bit of a feeling of like the plastic of the marker and the felt tip and even the scent of the ink. And I don't know how much of that is actually in here or how much of it is just completely because my mind is filling in the gaps between Mr. Sketch scented markers and what I'm smelling here. But regardless, there is something very distinctly different from Alan Wee where, where this is outside and very much like a garden and things growing out of the ground and natural. This is, this is kind of indoor to me and like inside a, a man-made building instead of jasmine growing out of the ground, it's kind of like jasmine, jasmine under glass, like behind glass and metal or, or a photo of a flower in a glossy magazine, even with the sense of like that, that glossy finish on the paper and whatever components make up the, the paper and the ink in the magazine. To me, there's something very sleek about it and like smoothed out in a way that, that isn't true for this, where this is, it has a lot of the, the roughness and different textures. And this feels like it's been a little bit manufactured and modulated to be pleasant. And I just want to be very clear too, that when I talk about things like natural versus synthetic or natural versus natural versus manufactured, I am not attaching any value judgments to either of those terms. I'm not saying that natural is good and synthetic is bad because not at all. There are lots of natural things that smell bad to me and artificial things that smell good. Like, like a real papaya fruit, I think smells like dirty feet, but then they're probably papaya flavored or scented things that, you know, smell pleasantly tropical. So anyway, just to settle that out, because I think I think those terms help me when I think about these two, natural versus more synthetic, and outdoor versus indoor. That's that's kind of where my head goes with these. Yeah, so not the literal growing flowers, but maybe a photograph, a studio photograph of the flowers, but a very beautiful studio photograph of the flowers. And it's very much kind of in contrast to this one where I said I would feel it would feel wrong to wear inside of an office. This feels like it could be it could be at home inside a glass and steel high rise. So opening very much the purple, the the smelly markers things, and then when you get farther into the dry down, I, I think sometimes I get a little bit of maybe a fuzzy, fuzzy blossom thing peeking through. But even then it's like fuzzy blossoms that are behind glass taken inside from from the garden. So there's that little that little bit of distance. And it, it overall it stays kind of smoothed out. Yeah, and farther down the dry down, I start to get some of the the cinnamon and what I my nose reads as licorice, so a little moving away from from the flowers into spices and other elements there. It very much becomes like a smooth calm tea without tannins. It just goes down real easy. And that's kind of where I am with, with Jasmine Rouge. So Alien, here we go. Like I said, for you guys, I will not go into too much detail about what Alien smells like, but whatever, I, you know, supposedly three notes in this, I can put that up there. So my Alien story is that I first smelled this maybe, I mean, over 10 years ago, I got some samples and I was trying them and I thought it smelled really good, but I also felt like it was kind of, it was maybe too big for me and maybe it wouldn't like sit right on my skin. So I wasn't quite sure if it was something that I could actually wear. But then one day, again in the summertime, I was walking around the neighborhood and this girl came out of her building and was half a block ahead of me and I just caught on the breeze behind her in the air were these honeyed 
like tendrils of of alien just floating floating through the breeze it was so alluring so beautiful and enticing and intoxicating and it was in that moment that I just kind of felt like I get it now I get why alien is special I get why people love it and again it felt like it almost had like a physical presence in the air like I felt like I could almost see it <laughs> see it in little clouds walking behind this this girl so that's you know that's when I knew that's when I knew that alien was special it wasn't just hype it was it was really something you know this you spray this on and it opens really again big and it's juicy and it's sweet and it's almost candy like for me again it's very purple I don't know how much of what I feel about Alien is is tied to the marketing and the language that they use around it but I do feel like it does have this aura where it's magical it's a talisman it's it's a gem there's something about the the purple faceted glass and the gold and it does it does feel a little bit magical it does feel like a talisman. I do find it interesting looking at these three together. I mean, there's no reason for these three particular perfumes to be together. They're just sort of randomly the ones that I happen to have. They're, they, there's no reason for them to be talking to each other, but I do like the way they kind of represent three different distinct points of view. You know, you've got your super naturalistic flower growing out of the ground, and then you have your indoor flower behind glass inside of a, a building and then this is like even beyond like this times a thousand it's it's hyper reality this recreation of not just the literal jasmine but an imagined mystical alien jasmine on a, on a different planet where where flowers smell like candy and and everything is just sparkling and extra alive so the thing that they all have in common though is that they're all they're all kind of big in their own ways. They take up space. I mean, arguably you could say maybe the Jasmine Rouge doesn't do that quite as much, but it it does have its own kind of presence. The glossy magazine, scented marker, plastic and ink, jasmine. I don't know, maybe you don't get that, but you can't tell me that I'm wrong because that's what I smell. And even if it's not quite as 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 big or doesn't have quite the personality of these two it's still none of these is quiet none of these is, is staying in neutral so yeah I don't know how useful this is for anybody else but for me it was helpful to kind of think through talk through different types of jasmine and obviously there are so many more that I don't have this is really these are the main ones that I have there's so much more to explore but helpful for me to kind of start thinking through the ways that jasmine can be and maybe maybe helpful for you too if you are similarly thinking things like this and again all thanks to poor Tangi nobody likes you nobody cares about you I, I felt I feel kind of bad not liking this because it is it is a bit of an underdog and nearly forgotten to time but I I didn't like it so oh it even made like a sad noise like a sad little animal poor thing yeah all right I'm gonna call it that's the video thanks for watching and um talk to you again some other time